All right, let's try this again. If everybody would take their seats, please. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the introductory meeting of Detroit New Tech. Um, we're really excited to have everybody here this evening. When we look back three, four, five years from now, and they talk about the revitalization of Detroit, and they talk about that little meetup group that was the catalyst of it all, look around. You're the people that are going to be mentioned in that article. So we're really excited. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors this evening, the Collaborative Group, Wisdom U, Agency Medical, and the single most important group we mentioned tonight, Tech Town. Without their support, yay, we wouldn't be here with this great facility and with a great program. So Judy, I think you're ready for this. If you'll come up and say a few words to kick off the evening, we'd appreciate that. with all the other businesses here in the city of Detroit and Southeast Michigan. So, you know that TechTown is here to support you in any way that we can. Wayne State is here as a resource for you as well. There are people at TechTown you can talk to anytime, and they're willing to provide you insight, to provide you mentors, to provide you the support you need. So nothing is too small, just ask. We're gonna do our best to provide those resources to you. And there isn't anyone more proud of you than TechTown and Wayne State. So we're here for you. Thank you. My name is Milton Roy. I'm just the MC for this evening. Uh, Tan Tron, sitting at the very back, looking very shy. He's actually the, uh, the father of this particular chapter, and we're an offshoot of the Ann Arbor Meetup organization so we're really excited to have their support and uh, thank Roger right here. I mean without him we wouldn't have these facilities and the, the recording of what we're doing here. So okay first I'd like to introduce John Baugh of Dermanot. Uh, just a little bit of background on John, real small bit. He spent the last five and a half years as a guild master of World of Warcraft. <laughs> now, that's one of those things I kind of stay away from it because I get sucked in big time with things that are fun. So, John, why don't you come up and get us started then? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, this is very exciting. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I have the challenge now of not only kicking off the first DNU Tech, but also in five minutes or less trying to tell you what it is that I do for a living. So, I'm going to make my best effort at that. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Dermanot, Electronic Medical Records, designed for dermatologists. So when we say electronic medical records, really what we mean is replacing the paper charts in dermatology offices with something more akin to this, an electronic chart that patient or the physicians can walk from room to room, check patients up live, even go home after hours and be able to still help and treat their patients. So the team that we've put together we actually founded the company back in 2006. Uh, we're even celebrating our four-year anniversary this month, which is kind of crazy, but we still consider ourselves a startup. We only launched our product uh, a few uh, months back. We've got a dermatologist on board who's very active as a mentor and really helping us make sure that we follow with the specificities that are necessary for dermatology. Uh, Fred Estabrooks, our chief technology officer, and Kale Lloyd with client relations. Uh, to date, we've raised $186,000. We've gone through a couple different rounds of funding, uh, both through some private investors, as well as through Bizdom U, which you heard a little bit about earlier, uh, and Shorebank Enterprises Detroit. 
So we're very excited about that. We've got a great advisory board as well. We've pulled in entrepreneurs both from the Ann Arbor, Detroit area. Uh, and kind of to go a little bit more into the product, I'm trying to jump right into the demo. Uh, our technology, the software is actually a software as a service application that we're providing to dermatologists. It is a Ruby on Rails application. Uh, we use a little bit of Ajax as well. Uh, and uh, providing virtual service for each different client. So they have their own unique uh, website that they would go to, be able to see all their patient charts and interact with them there. Now, why dermatology? Why electronic medical records specifically for them? Well, years ago, and, and when I say years ago, 85% of dermatologists are still using paper. Um, so this is what their charts look like. Generally, they're going to be some sort of paper, some sort of diagram of the body where dermatologists are going to draw right off of there wherever they actually have lesions or rashes to document. And then they're going to fill in a series of kind of check boxes or common diagnoses and so on. Well, the early electronic medical record industry didn't recognize this. In fact, they tried to take access databases and, and similar forms and shove them down the throat of dermatologists. And that wasn't cool. So the systems that you're seeing on the screen now are really the offerings that have been out there for the past couple of years of dermatologists. And that's why dermatologists are probably the second lowest adopting medical specialty of an electronic record. So huge gap in the marketplace, big opportunity, and that's really what we saw. We partnered up with the dermatologists because their office was having these problems. And over the past four years, we've developed Dermanon. We truly believe this is the premier electronic medical record for use in dermatology offices. So without further ado, I'm going to do the unthinkable and give you a live demo of our system. And uh, of course, the unthinkable doesn't seem to uh, want to work. <laughs> Let's see if we can fake it. There we go. All right. This is live, as you can see up in the corner. We are actually on one of our test servers. I'm going to pull up a uh, patient. And don't worry, there's no HIPAA violations or anything. There's a fake patient with fake data. But as you can see here, we can pull a patient chart up just by typing in their name. We've not only got some of the demographic information that is very important to the doctor's offices, some of the kind of first things that they want to see, such as critical medical history. When the patient comes in, very quickly they can look at that, remember exactly what that patient, any special cases that are involved there. And then they can scroll down and even see the last examination that the patient was in for, look at the diagnosis, the treatments, and so on. I'm actually going to jump ahead to a office visit that I've prepped for today. So what we'd be able to do is really use this Google Maps for the skin chart of the body, be able to zoom into the various body parts, and actually click and place on the different areas, specifically where the problems are. So here I'll click on the face, we'll zoom in, and you can see that I've already got a little marker here placed on the chin. This is a, actually acne vulgaris, so you can see that according to the side panel on the uh, left-hand side for you. So when we click on this now, and again, the live demo never seems to want to work, uh, this is actually going to pull up a live um, pop-up, which I'm going to go to my backup, which is actually an iPad, also streaming this live. Um, and what we have here is the diagnosis in the, of the full medical uh, description of acne here. The, the important factor here is not only have we taken all the dermatology terminology, which the EMRs that are out there currently don't do, but we filtered them down into very simple pick lists so a dermatologist can categorize, zoom in, oh, and even have pictures over time of the problem. So as you can see here, we can click on a picture, see if the patient's acne was pretty bad when they first came in, and now it's all cleared up and they're happy. So without further ado, I think I blew my time. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Do you have any questions? Yes. All the way to that. Yeah. Um, no, electric. Oh, have a mic. You know, the idea of electronic medical records is, is pretty hot right now. Um, I think a lot of people are talking about how they can take something that seems to be so archaic and move it into the digital age. Now, you know, when you guys came up with this idea and where you're at now, do you see a lot of competitors kind of trying to eat your lunch, especially in this dermatology space? Or is, is there, are you potentially going against some juggernaut company that would own every single type of medical, you know, uh, specialty and, and do the exact same thing you guys are doing now? I mean, there, there literally are hundreds of EMRs out there in this space right now, and that's the same way it was four years ago when we started this company. 
Uh, four years ago, though, it was all companies trying to be the juggernaut. Literally, GE, um, you know, large, large companies trying to be the behemoth that are buying out or getting these large multi-million dollar hospital contracts and then trying to sell that same piece of software for six, seven figures to a single practitioner in a dermatology office. That's where we saw our opportunity initially. The market shifted a lot right now. There's still hundreds of EMRs, but there's the large hospital EMRs, and then there's the smaller general practitioner EMRs. The specialties are kind of the new and emerging market. I know uh, we're, we're not the only specialty EMR here in the room tonight, for example. Um, but one of the things that we're able to do is actually partner with some of these general practitioner products that have kind of a full suite of systems and, and have a very well-established brand and say, great, you provide your, your back-end support for some of those ancillary services, but we're going to be the clinical record for the dermatologists themselves. And we really see that as an opportunity where we're not competing against these other systems, but potentially cooperating with them. Uh, so if you started the company four years ago, why did you just launch the product a few months ago? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we launched the company in late 2006. Uh, we had some issues where my former founders left the company about nine months in, uh, which left me with a prototype and a great idea, and that was 2008, and as Terry can tell you, there, there wasn't too much money available at that point, and, and quite honestly, I wasn't ready to lead a company at that point either. Uh, so I went through a lot of work working with groups like Ann Arbor Spark, New Enterprise Forum, got hooked up with Biz and You, which has been phenomenal. Now I'm associated with Tech Town. They've been great helping me put the business plan together. Through that, we've been able to raise the 186,000, bring the team on. Uh, really, January of this year was when we really hired on the team and, and took our prototype to the full development and now market. Sure. So we've applied for a patent on our visual record, this historic visual record that we have. Uh, we applied for that actually back in 2008, I believe, uh, late 2008, 2009. So we're about uh, 14 to 16 months in. And from what I've told, it's about an 18 to 24 month uh, response from the U.S. Patent Office. So we're, we, we haven't, we, we conducted a full uh, extensive patent search at the time. We truly believe that we have unique uh, IP there. We haven't seen anything to date that has overlapped with our patent. Hey John, can you pop the lights that way? Uh, uh, the video guy wants to make sure you get to see the <laughs> Is this better? But you can repeat the questions too because I'm going to Okay, sure. Okay, what is your revenue model? Yeah, uh, as a software as a service product, uh, the question was what is the revenue model? As a software as a service, as a software, as a service product, uh, what we're doing is charging a monthly fee to the physicians based on the number of providers they have in their office. So that includes physicians, physician assistants, uh, but not medical assistants or nurses. Uh, it's a pretty standard model. Uh, you're seeing a lot of the software as a service EMRs adopting that model. Um, and we're able to really cover our costs, uh, have a pretty hefty sales uh, commission bonus structure to really encourage that growth model. Uh, but we see it really as a relationship, and that's why they're paying over time, or we're going to continue to provide them services, whether it's updates as medical uh, billing terminology and so on changes, whether it's supporting and hosting and, and so on. I know that you had mentioned that about 85% of the offices are still doing paper. How are you going to overcome uh, people not with, willing to give up their paper process for a technology driven solution? Sure. So to kind of Resum that or sum that question up. The, the challenge of adoption is a huge one. No doubt, dermatologists are very comfortable using their paper process. Quite honestly, they're making more money than most physicians using their paper process. Uh, the, one of the analogies that I love to use is it's like trying to have a marathon runner change his shoes in the middle of a race when he's winning the race, and and that's really what we're trying to do. We can demonstrate that we're going to provide accuracy benefits. We're going to provide speed benefits. And ultimately, we're going to improve the quality of care in those offices. We, can doc we, we have documented measurable data that shows that. Now, as much as we present that to them, when you find certain physicians that are happy with their paper, happy to make the money that they're making, are getting close to retirement, that's a much tougher sell. But I think the model that we're really trying to uh, go with is showing these physicians that this is the model of the future. This is how care is going to be improved. And quite honestly, the federal government has put a lot of financial incentives to motivate these physicians to move over there. So leveraging those as much as we can, 
and quite honestly, targeting the ones that we know are ready to move and, and really trying to work with them on establishing ourselves as the premier dermatology EMR. Let's go ahead and stop right now so we can go on to our other four uh, speakers this evening. John, thank you very much. Thank you. And go ahead and try for some Q&A after the discussion. ask me to do a soft shoot shuffle while I go through the electronics. I never quite learned that dance back when I was in high school. So just kind of indulge us while we go through this. Um, Mark is going to talk to us about his company, MyMentalSpace.com. Um, I asked Mark, what's the perfect background for an entrepreneur? And he thinks that his background is prototypical of what you all need to be. He has an undergraduate degree in psychology and behavioral neuroscience. He added on to that a degree in information systems, and then he got his PhD, if you will, in massage therapy. Now, that is definitely one of the more unusual backgrounds, so we'll see if he... Operate here. 